Welcome back to an all-new season of Cardinal Sports on PSTV. I'm Timber Stenig, returning from last season. And I'm Brett Porter, here for the very first time. I'm really excited to be on the show and become part of the Cardinal Sports team. Don't go anywhere. Cardinal Sports starts right now. Welcome back to kick the season off right. Not only are we enjoying a brand new edition of Cardinal Sports, but we are also enjoying our brand new set. That's right, Tim. We are sporting equipment from our very own athletic teams. However, that's not the only new thing around here. We are bringing back some of our fan favorite segments like Totally Teammates, but also have some brand new ones coming your way. But for now, let's get right to the action where the women's ice hockey team took on Middlebury College at the Ronald B. Stafford Ice Arena. Wednesday, February 8th, it was the Lady Cards taking on Middlebury at the Ronald B. Stafford Ice Arena, and it was a complete game for the Lady Cards, who after a scoreless first period got right to work, with the first goal coming with four minutes left in the second period from Caitlin Turk off a nasty deflection, beating Middlebury tender Julia Neuberger. This one stayed tight to the end of the third until Jordan Lipson goes bar down on Neuberger, making it 2 nothing, and the floodgates were open. The cards ran away with it later in the third, with Muna Fidel feeding Sarah Wolf after a great sequence of team play, making it 3 to nothing with five minutes left. The final goal came on a breakaway later in the third, when freshman Megan Cross slotted it home past Nurberger, making it 4 to nothing. And that's how the score would stay. The Lady Cards are now 22-1 with their next game, February 17th against Buffalo State. It was senior day at the Ronald B. Stafford Ice Arena as Plattsburgh seniors would be playing their final regular season home game as they took on number four seed Elmira. Plattsburgh would get on the board first as Courtney Moriarty gets a pass from Mackenzie Millen and would go five hole to get the goal in the first period. We go to the second period where Moriarty would poke the puck away from Elmira defenseman and skate down where she saw Jordan Lipson who goes top shelf for the shorthanded goal and gives the Cardinals a 2-0 lead. Still in the second period, Plattsburgh would score again on an Aaron Brand goal where she skates past the defender and stick handles the puck for another Plattsburgh goal. As we head to the final period, Plattsburgh would score one last time as it was Jordan Lipson for her second goal on the power play, giving the Cardinals the 4-0 victory. Camille Leonard would have 26 saves in this shutout victory. Now let's head off the ice and to the court of Memorial Hall, where both the men's and women's basketball team look to get a win as they both face off in a non-conference game against across the lake rivals Middlebury College. The men went into their home game finale with hopes of making the SUNYAC Conference Tournament. Although the Cardinals came out strong with the first five points of the game, Middlebury countered with a 15-1 run in the first half as Plattsburgh tried to mount a comeback before the end of the half Middlebury's offense kept on coasting. The Cardinals went into the second half trailing by six points. Car the Plattsburgh came out of the second half fighting, staying within signal digits of the Panthers until Middlebury netted 11 straight points midway through the half. The Panthers led by as many as 28 in the second half, ensuring a clear coast to victory. With this loss, Plattsburgh State drops to an 11-12 overall season and 7-9 and in conference play. They look to win against SUNY New Paltz in their next game. And after the men, the women were up next. The Cardinals played their last home game here in Plattsburgh. To start it off, Mo Jones drives to the basket and bangs it off the glass. She led the Lady Cards in the first half with six points, shooting three of four from the field. Middlebury struggled in the first half, shooting only 21% from the field, and Plattsburgh took a four-point lead into the half. Middlebury came out strong after the first half, outscoring the Cardinals 22-7 in the third quarter. Despite a bad third quarter for the Cardinals, they still fought hard as they would trim the lead to three in the fourth quarter. 
Hope Sarah Sulo would lead them in the second half, where she scored all 11 of her points. Unfortunately, that would not be enough as the Lady Cardinals would lose their final home game of the year, 59-54. to And now on Cardinal Sports, a brand new segment to the show we like to call Power Up or Penalty. It's a little game we like to play to get to know Plattsburgh athletes a little better, as well as to see if they know each other as well as they think. All right, let's send it to field reporter Kerry Gleason to check it out. Kerry Gleason here. I'm getting ready to play Power Up or Penalty with the lacrosse boys. Power Up or Penalty is a game where I get to ask a lacrosse player basic questions about himself, and we get to see if his teammates know the answers. Let's find out. I'm here with Peter Ciaselli, and we're going to find out some cool facts about him. Okay, so Peter, uh, where are you from? I'm from Endicott, New York. Oh, cool, that's fun. Uh, where exactly is that? Uh, it's like central New York, it's right by Binghamton. Where is Peter from? Shenango Forks. So, what's your major? I'm a public relations major with a marketing minor. Hey, wow, what is Peter's major? Peter's major is PR. <laughs> Uh, do you have any siblings? I How have, many? I have one. It's an older sister. Does Peter have any siblings? Pete does have a sibling. He has a beautiful sister. What's your middle name? Jacob. Jacob. Michael Jacob Ciaselli. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what's his middle name? Jacob. Jacob. What is your dream job? Uh, I want to be a rap star. <laughs> okay. So, like, like what? <laughs> like, Chance the Rapper kind of deal? or? I think I'm more like DMX. Okay. Uh, what is Peter's dream job? Pete's dream job is probably also doing nothing. Maybe playing lacrosse for a living because he loves it. So So I'm here with Brandon Heimbuck and we're going to learn a little bit about him. Uh, Brandon, where are you from? I'm from Geneva, Illinois. He's originally from Detroit. Oh, that's fun. My major is Management Information Systems and Business Administration. Uh, MIS and Business Administration. Okay, cool. Dude, I have two siblings, uh, one sister and one brother. Yes, he has two. He's got an older brother and a sister. Okay, cool. My middle name is John. Uh, I could not tell you. Um, his dad's name's Greg, so maybe that. That's my dream job. I don't know, probably doing nothing, getting paid for it. <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds like a great dream job. Uh, I think he wants to work for like Quicken Loans or something boring. <laughs> so this was Power Up or Penalty with the lacrosse players. And it was, yeah, it was fun. A lot of fun. <laughs> Seems like a lot of fun. Looks like Kerry had a lot of fun getting to know the lacrosse players. I'd say so, Tim. Before you know it, there just might be an installment for us two anchors. And coming up after the break, we have two guests, one from the men's lacrosse team and one from the women's softball team to talk a little bit about their expectations for this upcoming season. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Cardinal Sports. Every episode, we will have guests join us to talk Sports. Today we are lucky to have Matt Howard, a senior midfielder for the men's lacrosse team, and Jen Sarcone, a sophomore outfielder from the women's softball team. Uh, welcome to the studio, guys. Thanks okay. for having us. <laughs> so jumping right into it, can you give us a little background? How long have you been playing and uh, when did you start playing? Uh, I'm from Oswego, New York. Uh, it's a small town in central New York. Uh, growing up, athletics was a big part of my life. My parents enrolled me in sports at age three. I started playing lacrosse in the third grade, so that gives me about uh, 13 years now. Um, I was kind of a late bloomer. Um, I didn't start playing softball until I was in middle school, um, competitively. Um, and um, sports, just in general, were also a big part of my family, but no one really pushed me into it. Um, I just picked up a ball and fell in love with the game. And when did you guys know that you wanted to play at the next level? Um, just growing up, my dad is a college athletics coach at Oswego State. So just following uh, his lead, I just knew that sports was kind of my thing. And I would take the next step and play at the collegiate level. Um, in high school, um, my coaches um, were really big influences on me. And they really um, helped me to uh, find uh, a, the proper fit for me and that really pushed me into believing that I could do um, and perform at a level. And now it's been a long, um, it's lo been a long preseason, postseason. Uh, for the viewers who do not know, uh, can you describe what uh, preseason has been like and um, you know what a practice is like for you guys? 
Um, right now, because of the weather, uh, we're inside and outside, depending on the day and the weather. Either snowfall or the cold could prevent us from getting outside. But uh, every day we try to get outside. Uh, it's better for our spacing. Inside it gets real tough. It gets right. tough to see the ball. Um, so as much as we can, we try to get outside. Like today, we shoveled the field off ourselves, wow. just so we could get out there. But uh, yeah, one of the biggest things is just being able to get outside at this time right. and adjust to the spacing. So when we do have to perform in a game, we can perform at a high level. Um, for us, we also practice in the field house. It's um, six weeks of preseason, so we're in there every single day. Um, it's hard because we're an outdoor, outdoor sport, right. and uh, hitting balls into the ceiling is not really ideal, especially for outfield, where we don't really have the space to catch fly balls. But we make it work, and we have fun with it. And um, you know, going to Florida for spring break is what we use to kind of push ourselves, and mm -hmm. it's just a great, great time because yeah. we a make it warmer. a great time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot warmer. Get outside. Um, you know, you guys have been. Uh, this is not your first season here at Plattsburgh. What is your experience here as Cardinal sports athletes? Uh, what has it been like? Um, it's been a rather enjoyable experience. I feel as an athlete here, we're treated pretty well by the school in general. Um, we have great facilities. Uh, we get fed well on the road. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the biggest things is good nutrition, and I feel like the school supports us pretty well and it's been a pretty rather enjoyable experience here. It's good. Yeah, um, I think that being an athlete on campus it gives you like a chance to be a leader and that's like one of the big things that our um, program pushes is to just be a good person and it you know you're someone who's in kind of a leadership role so you're expected to you know do more for the community and be um, a positive um, person on campus so I think that's you know you get more so you are expected to give back more. Cool. And uh, what are you guys' expectations for the upcoming season? Um, obviously as a team your end goal is to win a championship. Uh, here at Plattsburgh the lacrosse team has never won a Suniac championship so obviously that's our main goal. But our main focus is to get better every day, just take a step forward, improve, uh, try to limit our steps back, and most importantly, we just try to do everything as one unit. Cool. Um, we just got our rankings for um, the coaches of SUNYAC, and um, we're ranked to finish fifth this year, which is um, kind of like an underdog statement. So we're looking to really um, prove a lot of people wrong. You know, we're returning most of our team. We only graduated one senior last year, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of experience and you know, as a team, we really gel well, and we are, as cliche as it sounds, we are a family, so we're expecting big things. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you guys for coming into the studio and having a talk with me today. Uh, thank you thank very you. much. Yeah. All right. And coming up after the break, we will be introducing a new segment we like to call Cardinals in the Community. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Cardinal Sports on PSTV. Welcome back to Cardinal Sports. Now we have a brand new segment to the show called Cardinals in the Community. Each episode, we will explore what is going on in the world of Plattsburgh Athletics by taking a look at how the teams are interacting with the community and find out ways that you can get involved as well. This week, field reporter Carrie Gleason was able to talk to our athletic director, Mike Howard, about an event called Game On For Giving. This 24-hour event was put on to raise money for our athletic program. Let's send it to Kerry for more on the story. So um, I recently have heard that you've had um, an event on Valentine's Day, uh, Game On For Giving. Yes, well, we what did. Exactly well, Game On was, um, I can't actually take credit for the, the, the wording uh, Game On. That actually came as a combination effort. Um, the athletic department and the institutional advancement office got together. Um, and it was an idea that I actually pitched in the fall. Um, there's a number of college athletic programs from across the country that have online giving days. So they kind of pick a day in the calendar year and they try to galvanize a lot of alumni support um, towards their athletic programs on that one day. So I, I pitched the idea to do this, uh, this concept and uh, everyone was real excited about it. So then when we had our first planning meeting with athletics and institutional advancement, uh, their staff um, they got some young, creative, 
uh, ladies down there who came up with the Game On slogan because um, we were kind of looking for a catchphrase uh, to describe the day. So that's how Game On came to be, and uh, that's a little bit of a uh, little bit of what the background is. So um, now, that since you just uh, took my next question, that's <laughs> um, right. How did uh, the event turn out? Though? The event turned out great. Um, one of the things I thought was lacking a little bit in our athletic side was our engagement with our alumni. Um, a lot of the coaches that have been here a long time have a lot of good connections with former players, former athletes and students, um, but um, many of the newer coaches that have come along in the last decade or so don't have those connections. So this event was primarily targeted to help them uh, get some engagement. And, and it was, as I said, hugely successful in that, in that realm. Um, our men's soccer coach was in here uh, this morning um, and he said he had talked to 40 uh, former players of his over the last few days leading up to this event that he hadn't been in touch with in a long, long time. Uh, so just in that aspect alone, uh, you know, that transcends across our whole coaching body. Um, it was just a great, very successful event. Um, it's wonderful how successful it was. Um, so since you said it was so great, uh, do you plan on doing it again? We do plan on doing it again. Um, to be honest, we, <clears throat> we, were, uh, we were surprised by the results. Uh, Valentine's Day seems to work real well because it's, you know, kind of show your love for Cardinal Athletics. Um, so I think we'll kind of keep, we'll stick with that theme going into next year. Uh, depending on, I haven't even looked at the calendar yet to see where Valentine's Day falls. If it falls on the weekend, then we might have it on, you know, a, a different day during the, the week. But uh, but having it around Valentine's Day is something that I think has worked real well for us. Coming up next on Cardinal Sports, a fan favorite that we just couldn't get rid of, Totally Teammates. A game where two teammates try and give clues or act out sports-related words to get their other teammate to guess what it is. Stick around to see who the first players of the season are right here on Cardinal Sports. Welcome back to Cardinal Sports. Now we have our fan favorite game, Totally Teammates. Last season, many teams worked hard to win and get to the Totally Teammates Championship. The first players here to take on the challenge this season are from Plattsburgh State's own track team. Let's see if they can rack up the points and get themselves a quick lead. Hi, I'm Mike Campbell. And I'm Annie Campbell. And we're a part of the track and cross country teams. And we are totally teammates and siblings. Okay, so this is um, where all the runners go and they get ready to like run. Starting one? Yeah. Um, this is when in baseball and they like hit it really far. Home run? And they if they call it something, it's like, whoa, uh, that's a... Grand slam? Yeah. Um, the runners each have their own, like, sprinters. They, they have oh, to the stay, blocks, blocks. stay in there. Oh, they're lame. Um, you jump over these in track. Hurdle? Yes. Yeah. Um, this is with running, biking, and swimming. Oh, triathlon. Um, where you go when you get in trouble in hockey. Penalty box. Um, this is like this, but the girl version. Softball. <laughs> um, when, in football, when you kind of catch the ball, but you don't. You drop it. Big, big pass. No. Uh, so we just finished the first round. Um, I thought it went pretty well. I'm Annie a, gave some good hints. I'm a good describer, and he's okay at guessing, but. I'm okay. I just didn't know what fumble was, yeah. but that's okay. <laughs> Okay, this guy was a boxer. Um, About the most famous one. Muhammad Ali. <laughs> okay, um, greatest hockey player of all time. Uh, Wayne Gretzky. Uh, <laughs> greatest female tennis player of all time. Serena Williams. Yes. <laughs> uh, this dude, I don't know. Okay, this. Uh, he plays on the Golden State Warriors. He's basketball. He's the point guard. Uh, he totally choked I don't watch in the playoffs. Basketball. Okay, uh, most famous distance runner of all time? Mo Farah. 
Wait. American distance runner? Uh, they made uh, movies about him that I love. It's obvious. Prefontaine. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, probably most famous golfer of all time. Um, ah, dang it. It's football. Um, tall. Oh, oh no! I can see the, I can see the movie. Oh. Yeah, I don't know what that means. I know, I know exactly the movie, but I can't think of the title. Anymore. Okay, Blind. Oh, Blindside! Yeah! Oh. Oh. That was stressing me out. Oh, man. <laughs> Baseball. Um... <laughs> Keep describing! <laughs> Do something! I can't... I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, what are some baseball movies? Square. Diamond. Rectangle. Box. Am <laughs> I carrying the box? <laughs> So that last round was a little more difficult, but we ended up getting 14 points, which is better than I thought we were going to do, so. Definitely, yeah. Um, anyway, this is Mike Campbell. And Andy Campbell. Uh, we're from the Cross Country Track and Field team, and tune in next time uh, to Cardinal Sports. And now on Cardinal Sports, another returning segment that will air every episode with help from the wonderful Sports Information Department, we bring you the Cardinal Spotlight. That's right, Tim. The Cardinal Spotlight is a weekly article that appears on the school's athletic website, GoCardinalSports.com. Each time, a different Cardinal athlete is chosen to be recognized. This week, Kyle Espeo of the men's lacrosse team and Stephanie Boucher of the women's cross-country team are in the spotlight. We received insight from both players into their sport here at Plattsburgh, as well as a dip into their personal lives, learning a little bit more about them, like what they plan to do after they graduate, and their favorite thing about Plattsburgh State. Stephanie said that after graduation, she wants to move to Montana and be a forest ranger. Tell me, Tim, what would you like to do once you graduate from Plattsburgh State? You know, I'm not too sure about that, uh, but I am sure of one thing. I do not want to move to Montana to be a forest ranger. I do not do well with dirt. How about you? If I can uh, manage to stay out of Montana, I would call it a job well done. Excellent. And Kyle said his favorite thing about SUNY Plattsburgh is the people. For the whole story, visit GoCardinalSports.com and check in next time to find out the next athletes in the spotlight. We hope you enjoyed our first episode back. If you thought that was great, we've got bigger and better things on the way. Join us next time for some more sports coverage and all of your Plattsburgh athletic needs right here on PSTV. Have a good night, Plattsburgh. After shooting the entirety of our pilot episode, we here at Cardinal Sports found out that both our men's and women's hockey teams will be hosting the SUNYAC semifinals at the Ronald B. Stafford Ice Arena. The men will play on Saturday at 7 and the women on Sunday at 3.